that if we are breathing in his grace, if we're, if we're mindful of the grace of God, living by grace through faith in Christ, that what comes out of us will be praise unto his name and blessing and thanksgiving. It's a great, uh, great challenge in a, in a song. And by the way, if you're saved here today, his grace did find you. Turn in your Bibles to Mark chapter 4. We're looking at verses 26 to 29 today. The, the mysterious growth of the kingdom of God. Just remember that we had this parable about the soils and the act of sowing and, and the seed being scattered. And, and then Jesus went from there into this uh, exhortation about a lamp under a basket. And, and if we're not, if we're not, weren't preaching consecutively through the gospel of Mark, you, could, you would take verses 21 to 25 and you would teach that principle. But because it sits where it sits in Mark, it, it's very clear that Jesus is saying, now I've taught you about sowing. What are you going to do with your light? He, he shifts his metaphors, but he's on the same subject. And the proof of that is this parable that follows it. Mark chapter 4, verses 26 to 29, the, the mysterious growth of the kingdom of God. I'm going to ask you if you would to stand with me if you've found that in your Bible. If, if you don't have a Bible, we'll have the words up on the screen for you. We much prefer to you, for you to work through this with your own Bible. I'm reading from the English Standard Version. Listen to the words of the Lord. And he said, The kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground. And he sleeps and rises night and day. And the seed sprouts and grows. He knows not how. The earth produces by itself first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. But when the grain is ripe, at once he puts in the sickle, because the harvest has come. This is the inerrant, infallible, all-sufficient Word of God. May God help us to learn from this today. Take another look at our sack of seeds. Look at our hands. Do they look dusty from seed distribution? And purpose to sow this gospel of the kingdom. Thank you. Be seated. Knowing in, a, in a, an enlarged way, perhaps, the importance that Jesus attaches to the activity of sowing gospel seed. I want you, you said, well, I know that. Well, I want us to know it more, because Jesus apparently wanted us to know it more. I want you to, I want you to go ahead with a, with a feeling, a sense of responsibility. The responsibility that we bear for faithfully sowing gospel seed. Don't let the seed stay in the sack. And then I want to challenge you to some action. Leave here purposing to disperse the gospel and leave the fruit of the gospel in the hands of God. We're going to show you something probably next Sunday morning in a brief video presentation of a uh, tool for sharing the gospel called Three Circles. The fellow that dev developed it uh, put it on a napkin and, and literally in the material that we received when, when Karen and I previewed this, at the Southern Baptist Convention, there was a napkin inside our little package that had these circles drawn on it. Very simple presentation of the gospel that you can do anywhere, anytime, in a short amount of time. We're going to follow that up with introducing you to some cards, business cards, connected to a site called truelife.org, where you can hand that card to somebody. If you hear somebody complain about what's going on, frustrated about this and about that, you can say, you know, those things concern me too. I want you to take this 
trace down that link on the back, that, that website. There's some great information. Because it's got videos about Mormons and Jehovah's Witnesses. It's got videos about all the present issues of the day. It's got videos about God and Jesus Christ and sin and salvation and the Bible. And they're well done. And all we have to do is just take that little seed, looks, it's about the size of a business card, and just go, here. But before we do that, I know we're going to have to purpose anew and afresh to disperse the gospel and leave the fruit of that, what comes from that, in the hands of God. So, Jesus is back on, really he's never left, his teaching on the importance of the seed of the gospel, gospel of the kingdom, and sowing that seed, scattering that seed, sharing that seed. But in this, in this parable, he speaks of the mystery of how the kingdom advances, but then he also gives an assurance of the inevitability of the kingdom advancing. So I hope that when we leave here today, you're going to leave somewhat encouraged that this task is not a daunting task that he's given us. Because when we share the gospel in whatever form, whatever medium, Paul says the gospel is the power of God unto salvation to all who believe. So I want us to see real briefly this morning in these some four things from these verses. First, the kingdom compared to seed sowing. Secondly, the mystery of gospel seed germinating. Third, the stages of gospel seed growing. And fourth, the certainty of a coming harvest. First of all, the kingdom compared to seed sowing. He's, he says in verse 26, the kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground. Now, one writer has observed it. Would, would you have portrayed the kingdom of God in this way? Probably not. We would have gone for something much more uh, on, the, on the big side of incred incredulity, the, the, the wow factor. Jesus says the kingdom is as if a man was sowing seed, scattering seed. A daily activity. Even the, even the men who were following him, who were fishermen, understood this action. We would have gone for something grand and glorious. Here's what this writer says. To shimmering mountain peaks, crimson sunsets, the opulence of potentates, the, the lusty glory of a gladiator. But Jesus says the kingdom is like seeds. This is the paradox of the gospel. Something so great would come in such a mundane way. He says this is the scandal of the incarnation. <laughs> that God would come in the flesh, not as the conquering hero they had anticipated in their studies of the coming Messiah, but as a little baby born in a manger. But by speaking about the kingdom being like a man sowing seed, he identifies with each of us. If, if he said the kingdom is like a man going off on a conquest and bringing back dragon scales, we'd all be in trouble, wouldn't we? <laughs> but it's not that. It's a simple, everyday activity. In fact, notice what he says next. Talking about the mystery of this gospel seed germinating. He sleeps and rises night and day, and the seed sprouts and grows. He knows not how. What is that? What's that picture there? Do you get a sense that Jesus ever taught you need to sow the gospel seed and you need to worry, worry, worry about what's going to come of it? No. The man simply does what he's been taught to do. He takes his seed, he scatters it. Then when time comes, he goes to bed. He sleeps and he rises night and day, day after day, day after day. And 
I know some of you in here are quite the, uh, quite the gardener. And I just remember recently going out to, to Bob Airy's garden. And, the, and you, what you find there is you see in different stages of development the result of seed sown. Now, if he showed me a patch of ground and said, this is my okra patch. And I said, when did you, when did you put the seed in there? There's no seed in it. I've just designated it as my okra patch. Well, I mean, I don't know a whole lot about gardening, okay? But I, you know, I know enough to know. <laughs> is there any seed in there? No, just a, it's, it's a patch of ground I have dedicated as my okra patch. But if you have been sowing, see if you've ever done that, flowers, whatever, you watch it come up. It breaks through the ground. And, and while we may be able to read some really fancy explanations of photosynthesis and, and the germination of seed, and finally, we really don't know how that happens. Not, not in terms of first cause. And so Jesus is teaching here that there's, there's mystery. Folks, we have got to grant mystery in the gospel of the kingdom. Be afraid of a fellow who has an answer for every question about the mystery of the gospel of the kingdom. There's some things we just simply need to go, I don't know. It's a mystery. <laughs> If Jesus says it is so, then why would we spend our time trying to countermand that? I saw the other day, an email came through my box. Would you like to know the exact date of Jesus' return? You know what I did? Delete. <laughs> There's mystery. And Jesus teaches that. But in the teaching of the mystery, he also teaches that, that, that gospel seed sowing is not something we ought to fret about. And I hope to goodness, I hope I'm not pestering you with this. I hope and pray I'm not putting a guilt trip on you by simply going through the gospel of Mark and facing up to what Jesus teaches. That's not the intention. In fact, just the opposite should be true. If we understand what Jesus teaches about the gospel of the kingdom, the spread of the gospel of the kingdom, then we grant that there's mystery to it. We grant that there can be seed sown. We sow the seed. He has left that to us. We're the seed sowers. And we're not to sit there. And, have you ever seen a child? They have a project at school and that you're supposed to bring a seed, or maybe they, maybe they supply the seed, and they come home with a seed in a cup and there's some, some soil. You know what happens, don't you? That's day one, okay? Day two, it's like they're looking for something in it. Well, you just got to wait. You got to wait. We sow the seed. And by the way, I think some of you are sowing more gospel seed than you think you are. That's... And we wait. Yes, we can water it with our tears and our prayers. But we wait. He says it right there. He sleeps and rises night and day. The seed sprouts and grows. He knows not how. Just grant that there's mystery here. And grant that since Jesus says he doesn't, that, the, that mere man doesn't know how it grows, that the growth must be left to God. In fact, when it says that the soil grows by itself, the, the Greek word for that phrase, all by itself, is automate. You, you, you're automatic. You get our word automatic from that. And the seed, <clears throat> this, is, this is part of the mystery of, of planting and sowing and the seed has, has power within itself, life within itself, that once you plant it, from within itself comes the necessary means to grow. The gospel is the same way, folks. 
We don't have to convince somebody of, of the death and burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We simply need to share that with them. In fact, if we can talk them into it, somebody smarter than us can talk them out of it, can't they? We just sow it. We just share it. We just give it in all forms, in all media. We simply do that. Grant there's mystery. Grant that God's the one that can make give the increase. Paul said this. Paul said in Corinthians, one sows, another waters, but God gives the increase. That's what Jesus is teaching here. And it should be comforting to us. Because I imagine that in this place, if we took the time, many of you would stand up and say, yes, I have an unconverted, and fill in the blank, a near relative, a, a child, a sibling, a parent, an aunt, an uncle, a neighbor, a fellow worker. I've prayed for them for years. I've shared the gospel with them. Perhaps somebody else has shared the gospel with them. Perhaps the seed has been sown. And I just, I don't see any fruit. Wait. Wait. Wait upon the Lord with patience. I want you to see in the third place the stages of gospel seed growing. He says, the earth produces by itself... There's that automate, automatic. First the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. John Newton, the author, you know him best. When we say John Newton, you typically think Amazing Grace. But he wrote a whole catalog of hymns. In his works, I think his six volume works, there's a whole volume dedicated to hymns that he wrote. He was considered and was called by many to be a, a physician of the soul. He was a pastor's pastor. There were pastors from, from all over where he lived in the, in the English, England area would write to him and ask him questions. And he would, he would write back these very pastoral letters. And, and those have been collected. And there's a volume in his works of his, of his pastoral letters. And, and he writes about this matter, this blade, ear, full grain. He's very wise in the way that he addresses this. Jesus teaches there are stages that the seed develops. When, when a fruit or a vegetable or a flower pierces the earth, and a blade, a shoot, comes up out of the ground. It's the first sign of life. It's not fully developed. And John Newton talks about this. A person early in the season of being saved by grace through faith. Perhaps having become very alarmed about his or her soul, aware of sin and their sinfulness and the impending doom of judgment and crying out to God, Lord, have mercy upon me. Perhaps nurtured in the faith from, from the time they were a baby and, and growing up to begin to embrace by faith the faith of their mom and dad, the faith in Jesus Christ that he's heard about, but now becomes his or hers. The the blade. We need to be careful with those because you see it's, it's not attached to chronology necessarily to how old a person is. It's, it's how old they are in Christ. And I, don't, I do not doubt there are some here who have grace in the blade. In fact, it wouldn't surprise me if some who have not professed faith in Jesus Christ experience this very reality where the things of God the way of God and the will of God begin to stir you and they matter to you yet perhaps for whatever reason you don't have the the confidence of confessing Christ as Lord and Savior immediately when grace is in the blade and then he's talking about he's using the, the, the corn stalk as his example here then the blade grows long enough and shoots and then an ear of corn begins to be produced. John Newton talks about a person who has is, who is now grown in confidence 
in their walk with the Lord. And you've seen this if you've watched people grow in grace. Going from a, from a trembling hope that I hope Jesus Christ is mine and I hope that, he is, that I'm his to a, to a greater confidence, a gospel confidence, an assurance. I do belong to the Lord. I have been saved from the wrath to come. A, a hunger for the word. Yes, grace in the blade has a hunger for the word, but doesn't know what to do with that. Any more than a, than a newborn baby, we, have a, we get to see little Judson, my, my latest grandson, newest one. He knows when he's hungry, but he doesn't know what to do about that. Sometimes young believers, even if, they're, if, if they come to Christ in the older age of their life, they, they have a hunger along them, but they don't know what to do about that. Well, John Newton says grace in the ear the person who does. And then of course he speaks about grace in the full grain, fully bloomed, the fruit is obvious. We would, we would speak about the corn being mature enough to harvest. Jesus says there are stages. Now why, why is this important? Brothers and sisters, if you have walked with Christ for 10 years, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, it's unreasonable for you to expect somebody who's walked with Christ a year or two or three or four or five to, to know the things you know, to feel the things you feel. We need to be patient, don't we? Allow growth to take place. Allow God to generate growth in that regenerate person. Yes, we have responsibilities, just as if you left the corn alone, it might shoot through the ground, but without watering it, without caring for it, it could wither and die. We've already seen that parable. But I want you to know there are stages of gospel seed growing. I don't know where you are today. If you say, well, I've been walking with the Lord for years, then, then the full blade in the ear should be showing. If you're saying, I don't know, I, I've really never confessed Christ. I, it's not that I don't care about him. I know mom and dad tell me they want to see me become a Christian, but I, I just don't know. I don't know if the time is right for me. But take a look. You could be, you may be someone who has grace in the blade. We nurture that and care for that. The main thing is, let us not do anything to trample the plant. Recognize the sovereign wisdom and prerogative of God to grow from blade to ear, ear to full grain. Fourth, the certainty of a coming harvest. This, is, this ought to encourage you, brothers and sisters. He says, but when the grain is ripe, at once he puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. Now, the metaphor has shifted a little bit. He seems to have gone from speaking about Indivi the individual response to the sowing of seed where the seed germinates and then the, the blade shoots through the ground and then the ear, then the full grain in the ear to a, to a large harvest, a kingdom harvest. A laying to the sickle where you take it and you begin to reap the harvest. Now why should that encourage you and me? because there will be a harvest. It is impossible for there not to be a harvest if we are faithful to sow. That's all he's asked us to do. Give a word in Jesus' name. Give a cup of cold water in Jesus' name. Give clothing and shelter in Jesus' name. Engage your culture. Engage your friends, your neighbors, your enemies in Jesus' name. So that it will be obvious that what we do when, whenever we engage in an act of kindness, when we demonstrate care and concern, it is driven not because we have a more tender heart than somebody else, but because grace has found us, germinated in us, 
and grown up in us and we cannot help but have concern. I think one of the greatest challenges we face today in our culture is people who see people that they call Christian who don't, who don't seem to care who seem to be easily motivated to anger and resentment when something in the culture doesn't go according to what we understand to be the Christian norm sketched out in the Bible, but who do not have that same energy manifested in compassion for those who are not yet followers of Christ. In other words, it's funny because they'll tell you, I don't, I don't believe in God. I mean, I've watched these people carry on. They fuss with one another. They fight with one another. They can't get along with one another. You know, we, we, we study and say, wow, look at this, this Sunni and Shia uh, Islam, Islam. These folks throw bombs in one another's mosques. <laughs> Did you know something? Baptists know how to throw verbal hand grenades. What the world needs to see, I believe, what Jesus calls us to when he teaches this parable is to be content with those things that are kept in the mystery of God and to be committed to sowing the seed because there will be a harvest and when the harvest comes and it comes ultimately at the end of the age when, when the Lord sends Jesus and his angels to gather all the people up from the four corners of the earth. The question we need to ask is, was any of the gospel seed I scattered involved in that? We have an opportunity every day to scatter gospel seed in Owasso and Tulsa and Skytook and Collinsville and Ulaga and on and on wherever we live. We the doors opened us for us to scatter gospel seed in Haiti. It's not rocket science. You don't have to explain the Trinity. You don't have to be able to defend inerrancy and infallibility. You don't need to be able to explain the mystery of the virgin conceiving, giving birth to a boy. His name was Jesus. We simply need to sow it, to share it. And so Jesus has come back to this, challenging us to be content with the mystery and committed to the task. And to bolster the struggling that may come with someone about I just don't know if I have enough faith, Pastor. Then the very next parable he's going to teach us has to do with the mustard seed. The smallest seed that they knew about to assure us that it only takes a seed that big in our heart to scatter gospel seed. So, there'll be a harvest. Do you want to get in on that? Seed will germinate. Do you want to get in on that? In fact, I told you a couple weeks ago, the only seed that doesn't germinate in one way, shape, or form is the seed left in the sack. And if you had a section carved out for an okra patch and you had the okra seed put away, maybe, maybe set up, maybe, maybe on a pedestal with a sign that says the world's finest okra seed until it is introduced to the soil. It's virtually useless. So, 
Let's go together. Share the word of God. We're going to put in your hands in a few weeks, next few weeks, tools that make it so simple to give you an immediate focus and help you, help all of us to have ready the seed to sow. What is the seed? It's, you know, it's the good news, the glorious gospel, the testimony that God, who could have condemned all mankind to hell, instead, out of love, sent Jesus Christ to this earth to live the life we were commanded to live. We were called upon to be sinless, and we are not. We are sinners. But Jesus came and lived sinlessly. Then in the fullness of time, when, he, when all had been set in motion as God intended, Jesus went to a cross. Oh yeah, they beat him brutally. They, they mocked him. They, they did things to him that when you contemplate it and meditate upon it, it brings tears to you. But all they did was do what God intended to be done. And there he hung on that cross, bearing in himself my sin, your sin on the tree. And God satisfied his divine wrath that was focused toward you and toward me when he laid it upon Jesus and said, Okay, I accept your standing in their place. And instead of punishing them, I punish you. And he poured out his wrath upon Jesus Christ on the cross for that span of a few hours when everything went dark. Because that's what it should have been. Totally dark. And when Jesus said, it is finished, it was. <laughs> Salvation had come. His kingdom was fully established in his death and his burial and his resurrection three days later. The gospel. Some may say to you, I don't believe that. Doesn't make it not so just because you don't believe it. In fact, there was a time when I didn't believe it. And look, I'm thankful to God that someone didn't let my skepticism, my religious skepticism, stand in the way of them just sowing gospel seed. I'm so grateful for the people. There were plenty of people in my life who did that. Beginning with my mother, who sowed gospel seed. And I know there were times in my life when she wondered, Lord, what is going to become of this boy? She would weep. She was always faithful to sow. Always faithful to remind me that the love of God was offered to me in Christ. Sowing, sowing, sowing. Bible teachers in Sunday school, sewing, sewing, sewing. Vacation Bible school teachers in that short intensified time, sewing, sewing. People who in charge of the camps, sewing, sewing. Friends and peers, sewing, sewing. Siblings, so, siblings, sewing, sewing. And in the blade, in the ear. The full corn. We must share the gospel in many ways and forms. If you know somebody's heard the gospel message, then be kind to them in the gospel and help them to attach the kindness you've shown to the mercy of God in Christ. Be patient. Be committed. That's what Jesus teaches in this parable. Be patient. God gives the increase. Be committed. So, nonetheless. 
sow and sow and sow. Share and share and share and pray. And one day, out of the ground, a little green stalk. Because that's how God advances his kingdom. And he has determined there will be, will be a harvest. And he will not be robbed of his harvest. Let's pray together.